One of the hardest things an artist can do is to grow their audience. And that's what we dive into next. All right, let's face it. Growing an audience is not easy. I mean, sure, on Instagram, you can use hashtags. And on Facebook, you can, you know, have a group or a page and, and you can do hashtags there too. But in this day and age, you're just one artist amongst all of the artists. So how do you set yourself apart? How do you grow that audience? Well, before we dive into that, I'm going to tell you how not to do it. Because this is the biggest mistake I see artists making. They use Facebook, their friends list, to promote the shows they're in. We're all artists. We all have artist friends. I mean, I think artists are the biggest group of friends I have on my Facebook group of people. But, but then am I not essentially just marketing to other artists? Or maybe you belong to an art organization full of artists that are willing to send out, you know, notifications or e-newsletters that there's art showings. There are hundreds of art showings. I mean, we don't have enough time in the year to go to every one. It's just simply not possible. So those newsletters go out to other artists and they're still marketing to other artists. But that's not truly gaining an audience. See, what we need is a quality audience. And this is something many artists have a very hard time with. In fact, I think it's probably the number one thing that I hear. But how do I gain followers? How do I find those people who might be interested in my artwork? And I have to tell you, it's not the artist organizations or marketing to artists. That has a whole other set of value to it. And we're going to talk about that, but not now, because I don't want you to make that mistake. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to learn a little bit more about ourselves, and we're going to find out where our interests outside of art intersect with our artwork. I know, you're like, what? Is that even possible? Well, yeah, actually it is. See, what I've noticed, and I started noticing this trend with my um, flower painters, and some of their work is beautiful. Every single one of them, they like to garden. They like to grow flowers. It seems very foreign to me because I don't have a green thumb. In fact, if it comes into my house and it's green and leafy, it's probably gonna die. It is definitely not one of my strengths. So this was a surprise to me. You paint flowers and you like to plant flowers. Guess what? There's a ton of botany groups out there. There are a ton of organizations that you can volunteer at that regard flowers. There are even, in my community, local flower beds where everybody in the community comes together and they do the planting. This is a great place to meet people who have a common interest as you. And then you get to know each other and then you get to be friends on Facebook and then maybe you promote that you're doing a show and then the next time you see them, they say, hey, I see you paint flowers and one thing leads to another. Now, this is a very easy example and some of them aren't that easy but a lot of them are. See, our art comes from within us, which means it's a part of who we are. We have interests, and somewhere the two are gonna intersect in a way that will help you to develop an audience naturally. I, I, I can't tell you how important this is. See, as an artist, you have a luxury. You get to do you and gain a following. Yep, you get to do you and you gain a following and you can do it organically and naturally, and you can work to your strengths and likes in order to do that. I'll give you another example. I have grown up um, around horses and doing horseback riding, and I got a opportunity to do a set of senior pictures um, at a horse farm for a gal who volunteered at this horse farm. She wanted her senior pictures there. And to me, this was a dream come true. I could, I could take photography and horses and find a way to put them together. So I get there, I do the photography, the owner of the farm sees it, she loves the photography and asks me to come do a show, a horse show at her farm. Are you kidding me? Okay, so I do what I love, it intersects with something I enjoy and because I so enjoy horses, I photograph them a little bit differently. I work with them a little bit differently. I'm more natural because I'm comfortable around horses. 
That one thing led to a whole bunch of other horse shows, and it was wonderful. Now you might say, but then why aren't you going out there being a horse photographer? Because as much as I love it, it's not making visual art. And so there came a point where it diverged. That's really not the point though. One experience led to another, and I found a place where the two intersect. I mean, to this day, I do still have people asking me to come and do horse photography, and I enjoy it because there is nothing in this world as exhilarating as being on the other side of the camera, watching that horse come pounding out, pounding at you, knowing you just have to have faith that that horse doesn't want to run into you any more than you want it to run into you. It is the most exhilarating feeling I have ever had. <clears throat> now, do you see my point? You take something you absolutely love as an interest and you blend that with what you do. Then, when you are in that arena, you will naturally find followers. They will find you. See, the funny thing about the horse photography, as an example, is that when I was there doing the photos, of something I loved, other people became aware of me and they would just come up and ask and we would strike up conversations. And one thing would lead to another, repeatedly. A good part of my following comes from the horse photography days. And you can say, but that had something to do with art because it was photography. That's true, but one led to the other and the two intersected. So. What we're really talking about is what interests you, what hobbies do you have, and are there groups you can join or clubs you can join or volunteering you can do that fit in the arena of something that intersects with the topics of your art. I think by now you can see why the last video concept is so important to this one. We need to know those topics of our art and what they're truly about in order to be able to find the groups of people that will have an appreciation for it, which interestingly enough is other people like us with our interests. And then what will happen is you have more than one topic of conversation for people. You're no longer just talking about art, you're talking about the things that interest you. And these things can be political, they can be spiritual, they can be any number of things. It can be about you love the landscapes and so maybe a hiking group if you like hiking is right for you. There are so many ways to connect the dots between your art world, your artwork and real world activities. And when you go do those activities and you are going there to further yourself, you also feed your creative ability. You're playing to your strengths and likes and when you do that, creativity explodes. It's amazing and powerful to understand the topics of your work and the interests that you have and how they can feed each other. In fact, I would also say it's critical. It's absolutely critical. I mean, it's not like because I did photography for horses, I just stopped horseback riding. I certainly didn't. It's still one of my favorite things to do. And maybe I don't get out, of there, out there as often as I would like, but that's not the point. When I do, and when I'm able to, I have a number of different things to discuss with people, and that makes me accessible. Now, instead of just, there's the artwork, and some people are a little bit intimidated by that, there's this other topic. And it's typically gonna be a topic they're comfortable with. Now, talking to you becomes easier, and you talking to them becomes easier. And it's amazing the things that can happen from there. So. Make a list of all of your interests and then really think about which ones have the potential to one, intersect with your artwork, two, are very much something you would love to do to meet different people, and three, join a group. I mean, meetup.com has a group for just about freaking everything. There is always a group or, you know, get on Facebook and ask around. You would be amazed and it's critical that we spend time on ourselves. As we develop ourselves, we develop our artwork. And yeah, I know I'm repeating, but think about this. All the people who say, create a block, create a block, maybe you're trying to force it. And maybe you just need to go out and have an experience that releases you because you're paying attention to yourself and not just your artwork. I mean, sometimes I think artists 
think, feel, and breathe artwork. And we feel like that's the only thing that defines who we are. But you know what other things define who we are? Music defines who we are. Our home defines who we are. Look around you. What's your personality? What are your likes and dislikes? Develop those things and you're developing your artwork and maybe you're opening up a whole avenue for an audience. The other thing you're doing is you're giving yourself new talking points, new hashtags. You see how far you can go with this? I mean, think about this just for a moment. All this time we spend in artist organizations, which again, have a very big value in other ways. But now what if we split that in half and actually pay attention to ourselves? I know there, there are artists who will say, I can't take time for me. You're not, you're taking time for your art. I mean, it's a byproduct that it's time for you. If that's how you have to think about it to be able to do it, I'm totally good with that. I don't care how you con yourself into believing that spending time on yourself is a huge value. Go do it because it is absolutely playing to your strengths and it will put you in a position of power and instead of you going to show people your art people will now be coming to you and asking you about it that's an amazing feeling and it's a wonderful thing and it's easy to do it's easier than you think you've probably just never been told to think about it like that we think about art as art art is a product of who we are as I stated earlier, it's like our child. You wouldn't treat your child like that, so you shouldn't treat your art like that. I mean, in, in parenthood, we're willing to absolutely say, I need some me time. Well, in art, parenthood, we should be willing to say that as well. In fact, I think it's just as critical as a parent saying, I need me time. I mean, we have to walk away from it. Sometimes walking away is the most powerful thing you can actually do for your artwork. And I don't mean forever. I mean, just go get a hobby. I don't really care what it is. Find an interest group. Find things that amuse you or that you want to learn. I mean, there's plenty of groups out there. I'm not even opposed to you taking a class on, you know, video making. I, it's been very good for me. And it opened up a new group of people to me because, again, common ground. See, other artists, they're searching for their own common ground people. And they don't really necessarily have a lot of time for following other artists. I mean, we're told to go to everybody's openings and we're told to be at our own openings and, and we're told to do all of these things. But, I mean, that's great. But how is it furthering you? And I'm not saying you should never do it. Of course you should. But you time is actually just as good for your art. So make the list of all the hobbies and interests and then rank them. Just decide that in a year you're going to cover one or two of them. You don't have to stick with them forever. I certainly didn't with the horse photography and there's nothing wrong with that. As you go along developing relationships with people though, it's not like they're going to disappear because you're not in that venue anymore or not in that arena anymore because you'll have developed real quality relationships from a point of interest and commonality. And that's kind of powerful. You'll also find that you're more able to talk. You're more able to convey your things and you're gonna be able to be excited about it versus going to another art opening, one too many this week and having another conversation all about what everybody's doing. Again, it has value, it has lots of value. But activities outside of the artwork have just as much value and we neglect them. And it's because the art world keeps us busy. There's always another event, there's always another opening, there's always another gallery night, there's always another workshop, there's always another artist having a class. Pick and choose wisely. Do those things when they have value to you on some level. And then also do the things that are areas of self-interest or self-improvement. You're going to find that you build a different kind of audience, a different kind of groups of friendship, and you're also going to find that the unexpected happens. That salesy part actually turns into something else. And remember this, that the people you meet as you go on about taking care of those interests and those things, you never know who could end up being a collector. Everybody is a potential collector and should be treated as such. 
at just one of those horse shows, I met a gal who, okay, it's kind of a corny story and I'm going to apologize up front. I had to go to the ladies room, which meant I had to walk out of the ladies room. And as I was walking out, the gal approached me and we started a conversation. She had noticed that I was out there doing the horse photography and she just thought it was insane to be inside the ring with the horses. One thing led to another and we struck up a really good friendship. That was all I ever needed. Turns out that today she's one of my biggest collectors. I, don't, I didn't see that coming. She is one of my biggest fans. And you know what? In those moments when I'm just kind of like, you know, doing that artist thing where we can be a little moody and a little down, she's the person giving me a pep talk. I mean, think about that for a minute. Horse world all the way to this world, it happens. So always remember that anybody and everybody you meet could be a potential follower or fan. And it actually doesn't matter if they collect your work or not. There is so much value to these relationships. Treat them with care. And in part, remember that you're also making yourself accessible. Know your boundaries, know your limits, but carry on in the world of things that interest you. You're going to be amazed. I guarantee it. And just do one group at a time if that's all you have the time for. Maybe you have time for two. Or decide that you're going to try three new things in a year. That alone might be enough. You will be surprised. And you're going to grow something that is truly naturally grown and it's going to feel much easier and far less like the business of art. And that's kind of the goal here, right? The business of art shouldn't be horrible. It should be something natural and that it comes openly and easily to us. And why should it be that way? Because we're artists. That's how we function. We don't think like other people. And if it smells salesy or businessy, we know there's a better way. Here's the thing. It's up to you to teach yourself that way by understanding through self-awareness, confidence, and motivation what that way is. I can give you all the guidance in the world. You need to execute on it and you need to be self-aware. That's your job.